Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle, and today we have with us Jesse Miller, who is the president and founder of Integrity Enterprises. Welcome to the program, Jesse. Awesome, Mike. Thank you for having me on, man. I really appreciate this opportunity. Hey, you're welcome. And, um, you know, as, as you know, on my program, we talk about business leaders and um, innovation and just different things that a business owner or entrepreneur needs to learn and know. So um, before we get started into some good details and some good topics today, give me a little bit of a background on who is Jesse Miller? What was your entrepreneurial journey? Awesome. Uh, so I, I recognized at a pretty early age that I wasn't wired like everybody else, that I was wired a little bit differently. And uh, through really just digging into my purpose and and trying to understand where I fit in the world, I started to identify that I was an entrepreneur and that, I, that that's the way I was wired. I was wired to uh, take authority, cre- create initiative, and uh, and lead, and that I had an ability to see things a little differently, and um, and bring that approach. So I went straight to work in small businesses. Uh, most of my career has been as a first hire in uh, in a startup, or uh, so I worked directly with the business owners. I got to see a lot of different industries, the way they work, what works, what doesn't. And I decided that I wanted to create a resource for business owners. And that's how I started uh, Integrity Enterprises. I, I know business owners, I know what works and I know what doesn't. And I want to have resources that can help business owners speed up the growth of their company. You know, I think that there's a topic that I am hearing what you just described there, and I want people to understand, which is, you know, the value of mentorship slash coaching, but also I'm, I remember a, a phrase that many people have, have said it, so I don't know who to attribute it to, but success leaves clues. So if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner, and and you know that someone else has made a bunch of mistakes and they're going to distill their knowledge down into this piece of advice or this series of pieces of advice, now all of a sudden you can know how to avoid all of the pain, right? So talk a little bit about what your approach is with that coaching and mentorship with you know really having that passion for helping people avoid the pitfalls that not only you have made but your associates have made and things that you've studied in the market. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's ultimately that's what a coach does. If, if you want to boil it down and it's not necessarily just about avoiding the mistake side of it, but that's a big part of it. But yeah, it's absolutely looking at the systems and the trends and what it cre- what it creates. And the, the other thing, you know, the, the problem that most entrepreneurs have that a coach solves is that they know what to do. They just need an outside confirmation and reinforcement to get it done, to actually narrow it down, have the clarity, have the confidence, and the ability to step into what they need to do. That's, that's the big struggle. I mean, entrepreneurs are smart, man. They, they know it. They see the angles. They understand what needs to happen. It's, they just occasionally need that, that kickstart and that person to, to confirm their suspicions and give them clarity and confidence. Yeah, that's a really good point um, of the confirmation because I think that sometimes you're not confident in your own skin or in your own ideas, and you're like, I don't want to really jump in with both feet. But when that that person can say, Hey, that I, you know, I did that exact same thing in a different vertical, um, and so if we can just tweak this and fine tune that, this is perfect idea. So yeah, let's move forward. And then now that entrepreneur feels that clarity, like you said. What are some points though around? you for, or from someone bringing from an outside perspective, bringing just a, not, not a full on, uh, different opinion, but with that idea that you're confirming for them to give them that clarity, bringing just a little bit of industry knowledge to say, and this one little tweak here, we could do it so much better because it's not a, 
big difference, but this one little thing could make a, 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 a enough of a shift that it really adds a lot more value. And I think that the outside perspective, sometimes we get, you know, you lose your sight, you, you, you get lost for the, in the, the forest, you know. So um, what are some aspects that you've seen in your business that you can bring elements of your experience to help business owners, you know, see things in a new light? Sure. I, you know, I think there's a couple layers to this. Number one, one of the reasons it's really hard to get it from your own team is that, your team only holds a portion of, of the responsibility that you do. And so, you know, outside perspective is, and the, uh, the other thing that happens when you're working in a group is that you tend to narrow focus. And, you know, narrow and focus is great for going deep and really digging in and getting some results in a specific area. But what happens when you narrow focus is you lose some of your peripheral vision. And so that's where the, the outside concept really plays a plays a big role you're probably tripping over the answers you just can't see them because they're they're blocked out of your vision and that's you know that's what it does so that that's one of the reasons uh people that don't have industry specific specificity uh spec sorry that, that word didn't come out right but don't have a specific industry focus bring to the table they've gleaned uh things from 30 industries and they they understand the principles behind it. They can plug it in in an industry that doesn't typically operate that way. And that creates an immediate uh, difference in your value proposition for every, it, it just, that's how an industry gets disrupted. Um, yeah, I love it. And I want to uh, focus on something that you just said that um, I know you realize how um, the magnitude of the statement, but I want to make sure the listeners know um, so many times, coaches or consultants will talk to business owners and entrepreneurs about, you know, don't get shiny object syndrome and focus, right? Um, and, and, and I think that too many times people try something for two seconds and jump to something else, but if you got to focus on something, but you brought up something that I have never thought of myself, but it just was a, a aha moment. When you are focusing on something and achieving that because you are so focused, you really don't see what's around you. The peripheral vision is now impacted negatively because you don't want to look around at you because you need to be focused and you're doing that deal. You're doing the, the yeah. stuff that you need to do. So when you have those outside help, coach, consultant, you know, other associates, mentors, they then are watching things from that 30,000 foot view so that they can say, okay, good. Keep that focus, but you know, here's this. And keep that focus, but you know, add this thing in, and it keeps you doing what you need to do. But then here's your team, your mentors, and your your associates that you're relying on to kind of watch the big picture. Can you speak to that a little bit more? Because I think that's a huge, huge revelation. No, absolutely. So I mean, if you want to boil it down further, just you know, go back to the E myth and the, and the concepts that Michael Gerber talks about there. I mean, if you if you think about what doing and going deep is defined defined in that book that's a technician and yeah. you, you lose scope you lose scale unfortunately a ceo doesn't have the ability to do that or doesn't it, and if they do do that they get blindsided frequently they, they they there's an industry disruption they don't know how to handle it and they cannot make an adjustment to overcome the disruption coming at them from the peripheral because they can't, they haven't trained themselves to think in another way. And so, you know, that's the, that's the concept. That's, that's what I bring to the table when I'm working with the CEO is I want to help them take a deep breath, step back and see the whole field and not just get so locked in on what they're doing, but give them the ability to see the future, dig deep and understand the things that could blindside them. You know, and, and I, I, I think that's uh, uh, spot on. And you said something that reminded me of a great, uh, you know, quote or analogy um, about focus. And I forget who initially said it, but um, it, the quote goes, you cannot boil the ocean. Because if you try, it's just too vast. 
So that's yeah. why we need to have that focus, but then um, kind of having that safety net of your advisors around you so that you can you know, have them watching uh, the 30,000-foot view. So tell me a little bit about your uh, program, the Business Growth Academy. What does that do, and then what are some of those uh, benefits that bring to business owners, CEOs, and entrepreneurs you know, regarding some of the focus and, and things like that? Sure. So, you know, the concept uh, when we were working on the Business Growth Academy and creating it is in the, in no offense here, but in the, in the marketing sense of what a business owner needs, there's so much focus and attention on sales and marketing because that's what those guys do. That's your nature is to sell and market your products and services. So, the loudest people are the marketing guys because that's what they do. So just in really analyzing what a business needs, um, you can sell yourself to death. You can sell a product with a bad margin and wind up going backwards on it and not have good product processes, not have good systems, uh, not have a good bottom line. And then if you navigate all the stuff to create a good bottom line, how do you know what to do with that? And so the whole concept of the Business Growth Academy is to look at a business in a full scale and provide a resource and, and in a way, an advisory board for businesses that don't have to give up a ton of their, their income or revenue to be a part of that. So I, uh, I looked at the people that I wanted on a team, and I found an executive coach who's the best person with people I've ever met. If a company's got a mission, vision, culture problem, and they're not getting good buy-in from their employees all the way down. This guy is, he's an absolute wizard at that. I mean, he, he can look at it, diagnose it, and create a plan to resolve the issues there fairly, fairly quickly. Uh, and beyond that, he's a great guy. He spends time with his clients outside of his engagement with them and just shows me that he cares about who he works with. And then on the other side of it, because – it's not just people problems in business. Sometimes it's structure problems. I've got a business coach in here, and this guy's background is in manufacturing, um, understands systems, processes, and will look at a company top to bottom. If it's missing a step or it needs a new structure or process, he, that's what he does. That's his specialty. And then I've got a marketing guy that uh, has created a billion dollars in revenue for his clients, runs an agency, does an awesome job, the most, most energetic guy I've ever met. I love hanging out with him because, man, my energy level just increases drastically. And then uh, I have a, a risk management expert whose background is in banking and commercial insurance. So, you know, if you, if you navigate the first three, you've got good systems and structure, you've got uh, – You've got good people management skills. You're marketing, making money. Where, he, where this guy steps in is he says, okay, let's look at everything. You know, where, where are the weaknesses? Where, where are you not um, – what's going to kill you? you know, what's, what's the thing that's going to increase your risk drastically and then helps reduce that? And then on the back end, I've, I've got a tax advisor in the Business Growth Academy. So if you can navigate all that stuff – He'll work with you on how to keep more money and how to invest it accurately so that you're, you're keeping the energy inside of your company. So that's amazing, and it sounds so full uh, service and, and comprehensive. From an outside perspective looking in, I know you have the answer to this, but I think that this is a really big question that people will have and when they hear about this. When you have all of these pieces, how do you prevent overwhelm? Meaning yeah. when a new business or entrepreneur wants to come into your business growth academy, is it just everything coming at them 10,000 miles an hour and they're like, oh, I can't even, you know, can't even keep up. So what is the process that sure. you are just going to systematically walk them through and, and make sure they get every bit of benefit yeah. out of this without feeling overwhelmed? Sure. Well, uh, there's different levels of engagement to start. So, you know, the, the initial level is where we do it. We, we cover one topic at a time. We facilitate conversation on that and we carry it out for a few weeks following, following the, uh, the presentation. And so we, there's also a community of other business people in there working on the same agenda in their business. So 
in a way that's layered, that's educational. It's not necessarily speaking to where the company is exactly. Uh, our aim is to do that. We want to know who's in the room. We want to know who is, uh, who's engaging so that we can tailor it as much as possible. But there is a curriculum in that. So uh, another level is where we will engage with the company, specifically them. Uh, and it, it really depends on the scenario. We, we, we weigh that deeply. And we want to make sure that we're not just presenting on a bunch of information because that, I, I think that's a – that's a point that uh, so many business owners need, and you don't need more information. You don't need you don't need a ton of uh, five angles thrown at you at once. What you need is one thing to hang on to, create action on, drive it home, and then we'll layer it with something else. So that that's kind of the concept behind it, if that makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, it does, and I think that's that's the big thing um, that I I know I feel whenever I get involved in something new. I I want what I want but I don't want to feel like I'm overwhelmed. Now, what about this question? You named all of these areas from risk to operations to marketing and tax. Um, is there a kind of a custom, like what if a business owner comes in, they see, say that I need more help in this area, but another yeah. business owner needs help in a different area. Is there a custom way that they would go and engage in that content? Yeah, absolutely. We, we offer consulting in, in all of those areas through the, uh, the Business Growth Academy. So, you know, I understand that most need, you know, needs in a company change. If you increase sales a whole lot, you probably have production issues that are going to pop up. If you've created a bunch of cash, you know, you, you, you need some tax advisory. And so, yeah, we absolutely will engage on specifics with the company as we get to know them and dig deeper. So what are you finding when, when people are coming to you and you're interacting with businesses? What, what are some of those um, hot spot areas in their business that is the most typical that you see opportunity to help them yeah. improve? So it's not like, oh, they're doing horrible and this is a problem. It's yeah. an opportunity because they're running their business, they're successful, yeah. but boy, yeah. if we could take this one section here yeah. and fine tune it, and that's an opportunity for really big growth and, and momentum. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it varies. It varies per organization. One of the big things that that I do see frequently is, um, and we we work with businesses on this is, a lot of them are profit driven, and so they're, they're looking at numbers and, and making decisions based on that. And and every organization has to be profit driven, but I, I have a core belief that the fastest route to cash is through really genuinely deeply serving your customers and delivering results for them. And so I, I think that's one of the biggest changes that makes the makes the, the biggest difference, not just in profitability, because it does. And when you make Raven fans, they tell everybody about you, your marketing decreases, your uh, fulfillment increases in your business, and the customers that you engage with are a joy because they love what you're offering instead of being transactional and, you know, this is, let's get to the bottom line as fast as possible. It's, man, we love these guys. We're going to pour our company in, into them. We're going to build the best possible resource we can for them. And we know that long-term, that's the strategy that's going to, that's going to overcome everything else. Uh, um, I, I, I love the mix between here's some content, curriculum, process, worksheets, you know, homework kind of a thing, as well as specific training from specific experts. And, you know, it would have been a big red flag if Jesse Miller said, I am the business growth uh, expert, yeah. and I do operations, yeah. and I do marketing, and I do risk, and I do tax. Yeah. Uh-uh. You can't be all things to all people. So I love that you align yourself with a team of experts that their area of expertise are those specific areas. So for a business owner to come in and know that they can get the content and the, um, the time frame they want in the uh, medium that they want, whether it's some video, audio, workbooks, whatever the case, and personal interaction, to me that's a big, big piece. So what would you um, recommend? What's the next step for someone that may want to learn a little bit more about the Business Growth Academy? How can they reach out and uh, learn a little bit more and maybe connect with you? Sure. Yeah, I'd say uh, the best way to connect with me specifically would be uh, my my uh, website, and that's integrityenterprises.us. Go through there, kind of flip through, and uh, we'll have some information about the Business Growth Academy on it, and uh, let's start a conversation. 
Excellent. Well, Jesse, thank you so much for your time. It was wonderful getting to know you, your approach to business, and the Business Growth Academy. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate this opportunity, man. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.